My name is Tariq Mustafa and I'm a researcher at the Center for Longitudinal Studies. Uh, my presentation today will focus on two aspects of uh, the Millennium Core Study. First, the MCS sample design and secondly, attrition in uh, MCS. So we'll see what uh, we know about attrition and how we can uh, deal with it. Uh, so the MCS population is defined as all children born between the 1st of September 2000 and 31st of August 2001 in England and Wales and between 23 November 2011 January 2002 for Scotland and Northern Ireland. All ch children were alive and were living in the UK at the age of nine months and were eligible to receive uh, child benefits. Child benefits at the time was a universal benefit and all children were receiving it. So uh, the child benefit uh, records were used to identify uh, the children who were born in this specific period and who were eligible to participate in MCS. After the first wave, so after nine months, uh, children in order to be eligible to be part of MCS, they had to be uh, remain living and remain in the UK. So in other words, we are not following uh, children who have uh, left the country with their parents. Uh, the MCS population includes uh, also children who are living in non-household situations such as uh, women refuges, hostels, hospitals and prison. However, in practice, none of the children were in such, uh, uh, well, under these circumstances. Uh, it also covers children not born in the UK but established as residents in the UK at the age of nine months. However, the population excludes uh, children who uh, died before age nine months and uh, UK-born children who emigrated from the UK before uh, nine months. And actually, any uh, respondents or children who have left the country will no longer be eligible to be included because MCS doesn't follow people abroad. Children who were not established as residents in the UK at age nine months were also excluded from the sample. So these might include children of foreign diplomats, asylum seekers, and so on. Uh, the MCS sample design is uh, complex, so uh, MCS has a stratified and clustered uh, sample. The population was stratified by all four countries of the UK, so England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And uh, each country had two uh, strata, one for advantaged and one for disadvantaged so social groups. England had ad an additional uh, stratum uh, for uh, ethnic minorities. The primary sampling unit, so and uh, at which the clustering was done, is uh, the electoral ward. And small wards with very few uh, people in them or very few verses were merged into what was called super wards. MCS also has oversampled minorities and disadvantaged families. And the reason for oversampling is that, well, first, these groups are substantively interesting and they are more likely to drop out from the study over time. So we decided to have more of them uh, in wave one uh, in order to compensate for uh, their loss uh, over time. The identified sample consisted of 27,201 families and the issued sample consisted of 24,180. However, the productive sample in in wave one consisted of 18,552 families. Uh, so, uh, and there are 692 uh, families who, are, who joined MCS in wave two, and these what what we call new families. So these are basically families whose addresses were not known in wave one, so we were unable to contact them. However, we established contact with them from uh, wave two onwards. So at this stage, we need to distinguish between two types of non-response. So first, we have unit non-response, and this is the case where uh, respondents have been selected to participate in the study, but uh, they do not participate. So we have completely missing records for these particular individuals. In contrast, we have item non-response, and this is the case where respondents have participated in the survey, but did not answer all questions. So we have gaps in the information they provided. In this presentation, I'm only focusing on the case of unit non-response. So this is the case where a respondent has dropped out from a particular wave of data collection 
and uh, therefore we have completely missing record for this respondent and for this uh, wave. This is what we call unit non-response. So unit non-response happens for so many reasons like non-contact, refusal, inability, and yeah. So I'll come back to these uh, in the next slides. We know that in uh, longitudinal surveys, non-response is uh, increasing. So it's a fact of longitudinal survey. Uh, all such surveys will have a declining samples over time, and people will be dropping progressively uh, as the survey gets older. However, non-response is not always permanent. So some respondents might drop out from the survey and then come back again. And as we will see, uh, non-response has uh, some um, uh, negative effects in terms of sample size and sample composition. We'll get to see this uh, in the next slides. So definition of attrition is the discontinued participation of some individuals in a longitudinal survey for reasons that are unknown or beyond the control of the researcher. So for MCS, this is what happens to the sample over time. So you could see that at age nine months, so this is wave one, we had 18,551 families. And the number of families started to progressively decline until reaching 11,726 by age 14. And this table gives a, a detailed breakdown of the types of uh, non-response. So the first line, basically is the number of productive cases, so the number of families who have participated in the survey. You could see that it's declining over time. And the other categories are different types of non-response. So you have refusal. So this uh, is the case where respondents have refused to participate in the study. Uh, we have uh, uh, ineligible, which might include um, respondents where the cohort member has died, or uh, respondents who have left the country. So emigrants. Untraced movers are respondents for whom uh, actually whose so these are respondents whose addresses are not known. So we were unable to contact them. And you could see that their numbers are fl fluctuating. Um, we have non-contact, so this is a different category. So these are basically respondents whose addresses are known. However, we were unable to establish contact them uh, contact with them because they either live in gated communities or gated buildings or have long working hours uh, or night shifts and so on. So we know their addresses, but we were unable to contact them for various reasons. Finally, we have this uh, category of not issued. And this is, is a particular category where respondents have not participated in the survey for a number of consecutive waves. So we know that they are very unlikely uh, to be contacted in the future and therefore in order to minimize the cost of the survey we do not attempt to contact them so we don't even issue them to the uh, to the field so on this chart you can see that the number of uh, refusals and the number of not issued cases are increasing over time while the other types of non-response are more or less stable so they are fluctuating and this is because actually some of them when they are absent for uh, more than two ways, we are, they are moved to the not issued uh, category. So now we need also to distinguish between uh, monotone and mon non-monotone response. Uh, monotone response is defined as respondents who have dropped out from the survey without coming back. While non-monotone response is the case where respondents have participated in the survey, dropped out, and then came back again. So they have interrupted response patterns over time. Uh, in the table on the left-hand side, you could see that in MCS, 47%, so almost half of the sample, participated in all waves of, uh, uh, of the survey, while 30% uh, participated uh, in a number of waves and then dropped out without coming back. And 22% have non-monotone response, which means they have interrupted response patterns. Uh, on the right-hand side, you could see that about two-thirds of the respondents, so the 47% plus the 16.9%, have participated in at least five waves. So they have more or less complete records. So at least two-thirds of uh, our sample have 
uh, data in five waves of MCS. So now moving on to uh, sample composition and what happens to it over time. Here you could see what happens with the gender composition. So you could see that the proportion of girls has increased while the proportion of boys has uh, decreased. And this is caused mainly by a differential response. So uh, the parents of uh, boys are less likely to respond to the survey for some reason. And this has changed the um, gender composition of the sample. We, uh, so the number of boys has declined by about 1.5%. And the number of girls has increased by the same amount. So you could see the numbers are converging. Here what happens in terms of uh, two uh, variables, so uh, social class or professional uh, class. Uh, so we have uh, whether the parents of the court member are doing managerial and professional jobs. So their proportion has increased uh, by about 5% uh, over time. And uh, respondents, so the, pa the main respondents so, or the parent of the court member who have high levels of education, their proportion has also increased. So you could see that response tend to be higher among these uh, two categories. So people with uh, higher or, I mean, managerial and professional jobs and with higher levels of education. So in terms of effects of non-response, so we could see that uh, unit non response would lead to smaller samples, fewer transitions, incomplete histories in the case of longitudinal studies, and lower, lower statistical power. And this is because actually we have smaller samples, so we are lo losing uh, respondents. And it leads also to, to bias in sample uh, composition. So we have uh, disproportionate representation of some groups. So we might lose uh, respondents who are. Uh, mobile, so they tend to move homes, who come from disadvantaged background or from ethnic minorities, uh, those who are younger, those who are men who have long working hours. And this, of course, would lead to bias in sample composition and would require adjustment. So after a while, your sample would not be representative of the parent population it was drawn from. And uh, your results would not be generalizable to this uh, parent population. So what should we do? What should we do about uh, attrition? Well, first you could ignore the problem. However, this is equivalent to assuming that there are no sample bias, and of course this is a wrong assumption. Secondly, you could use adjustment techniques such as weighting and imputation. In MCS, we have so far produced attrition weights, which need to be used uh, uh, in conjunction with the sampling weights. So in MCS, we have two sets of weights: the sampling weights. These adjust the sample composition to take account of oversampling in the first wave. In contrast, the attrition weights, they ad adjust the sample composition to take account of the loss of particular, of particular type of respondents. So let's say if we are losing uh, uh, boys, uh, so boy cohort members, we need to give more importance or more uh, weight to the remaining boys in the sample. Uh, and uh, in MCS, we have the overall weights, which are equal to the uh, product, so the sampling weights multiplied by the attrition weights. Attrition weights are constructed using logistic response models. So the dependent variable is a binary response outcome, taking the value of 0 if the respondent did not participate in the survey, and 1 otherwise, so if they participated. The independent variables uh, could include any characteristic characteristics of respondents from any of the previous uh, waves. So in MCS6, we have uh, two uh, response variables. So these are F issued, and this basically is a flag variable that indicates whether the family was, issu was issued to the field. And this FA out outcome basically is a response outcome that includes, uh, that tells us whether the family was productive, so whether they participated in the survey or not, and it gives us the different types of non-response. Here is a full list of weights we have in MCS so far. So you should know two things. So first, the weights end up with either one or two. All weights then end up with one, 
are for specific country analysis. So if you are doing um, an analysis for Scotland or England taken apart, then you would use this way. However, if you are doing an analysis for the whole of the UK, then you would use the weights that end up with two. All weights are alpha coded. So the first letter in each variable name, so the name of the weight, uh, start with a, mm, a alphabetical uh, uh, letter. So A is for wave one, B is for wave two, C for wave three, and so on. And as I said before, uh, the overall weights are equal to the sampling weights multiplied by the attrition weights. So here you have an example of how weights can be used in uh, Stata. So you need to use the weights in conjunction with the design uh, features of MCS. So the first line here is you need to use the SVY command in Stata. And here uh, the uh, words in black are basically uh, the commands and everything in blue are variable names. So SVY set, you are issuing the command and then you are specifying the different variables. SPTN is the electoral word ID, so this is the primary sampling unit. P weight is, uh, so this is the weight for wave MCS6 for whole of the UK analysis. So it starts with an F, so this is for the wave 6 and ends with a 2, so this is for whole of the UK uh, analysis. Uh, and then you have strata, and this defines the stratum uh, identifier, which is PTT type. It has nine different categories. And finally, you have uh, an adjustment factor, which is NH2, which you also need to specify. So after issuing this command, you would use uh, uh, your normal uh, commands, whether you are looking for doing regressions or uh, proportions or any kind of statistic after the SVY uh, command. So you need to, to note two things. First, that you have to choose the correct weight. So as I said, you need to choose the weight depending on whether you are doing country-specific analysis or whole of the UK analysis. And you, ne you need to choose uh, which wave the weight corresponds to. And the general rule is that if you are using va uh, variables from wave 1, 2, and 5, then you would use the weights for wave 5. So always use the weights for the most recent uh, wave you are using. Another uh, uh, thing that you, you, you need to uh, uh, consider is that if you are doing very complex regressions that are not supported by the SVY command in Stata, then in this case, you wouldn't be using SVY, but you need uh, still to specify the correct weight in your, uh, in your command, and then you should use a stratum as another control variable in your uh, regression. So uh, this is basically it. And if you have uh, any, any questions, then please go ahead and uh, write them down in the chat pane. Yes, so these slides will be uh, available later. This is the first question. OK, so we have a question uh, from Slava. Uh, so if you would use the weights uh, in your analysis, uh, would this be sufficient to control for missingness? Well, actually, this is a very important question, and uh, it depends. So uh, the weights that we have constructed have taken into account uh, the major socio-demographic characteristics of respondents, so gender, social class, uh, housing tenure, type of accommodation, and so on. So these weights would correct for uh, this type of uh, variables. However, if you are interested in a particular, uh, let's say, health condition, uh, then these and this health condition was not included in the construction of the weights, then uh, the weights would not adjust for any kind of uh, non-random loss uh, related to this health condition. So uh, on the UK data service, it says uh, there is an issue with uh, SPSS weights and only Stata weights should be used. 
is this still correct and will it be an issue with wave 6 also I have not heard this uh, before uh, we provide the data into an SPSS format to the UK data service and the, uh, the, at uh, the UK data service the data are turned into SPSS format yeah, I'm sorry are they turned into uh, DTA format for Stata as well uh, and uh, they are provided to the users in the different formats so whatever it is in the one uh, type of data set is in the other type of data set can you please provide us with more information on what exactly you mean in order to know exactly what you refer to because the data should be the same across different folders uh, they are provided in different folders from the Yikita service, but it's basically the exact same data set in different formats. Uh, and you can email CLS feedback at ioe.ac.uk with the information on with information on the issue, and uh, we'll deal with it straight away. Yes, I think, I mean, SPSS is, is, is usually more complex uh, to handle the weights and uh, the MCS uh, design. Uh, so in Stata, you could just use um, uh, the SVY command, and that would help, I mean, that would be straightforward. So SPSS is, is a bit, is a bit uh, more complex. Ah, so if you are analyzing data from multiple sweeps, MCS 1 to 6 in two countries, England and Scotland, which weights should you uh, use? So basically, we have only, I mean, I, I would say country specific weights, uh, just selecting these two countries because the other set of weights are, are for the whole of the UK, including Wales and Northern Ireland. Uh, yes, actually, uh, we have, so basically, now we are moving uh, to the use of multiple imputations instead of using weights. So I think this is the last time we produce weights for MCS. So uh, next time, we uh, will be advising data users on how to use imputations. And we will help them by ident identifying uh, uh, all the predictors of response. So imputa imputations basically works by filling the missing uh, gaps in the data you have. And you could produce multiple data sets uh, to reflect the uncertainty about uh, the value to impute. And uh, in the future, so for H17, uh, we are going to publish um, a user guide on uh, the, the predictors of response, which data users will be able to use in constructing their own weights or in uh, doing uh, multiple imputations. So if you are using uh, variables from different waves of MCS, then uh, you should use the weight that corresponds to the most recent uh, wave. So if you are using uh, variables, as you said, uh, from MCS4 and MCS5, then you should use the weights for um, MCS5 because these will take account of all uh, previous attrition. And actually, the weights are constructed, so the weights in wave 5 are equal to the sampling weights so design weights multiplied by wave attrition weights in wave one multiplied by attrition weights in uh, attrition weights in wave two and so on until I mean they were multiplied by attrition weights in wave uh, five so they are cumulative. Well, if the person actually uh, if the person doesn't have data in MCS five and did not respond, then probably they will not be included in this wave or in uh, let's say in your longitudinal sample of MCS four and MCS five. However, what I think you meant here is whether it's item not response, so whether they did not answer a question and they have a missing record for this particular question. I mean, this is a whole different uh, type of, of, um, uh, of issues with, with, with data analysis. So if you have uh, uh, item missingness, then probably you should use, um, you would either drop them from your sample or uh, you would do some kind of multiple imputations to fill uh, the gaps resulting from item missingness. So here, assuming that the uh, person has responded to the survey. So, uh, so basically, there are only two sets of weights, one for the whole of the UK and one for uh, each uh, the countries taken apart. However, I would say that if you are doing um, an analysis for a combination of two or three countries, then possibly you should use the country-specific uh, uh, country weights. Does that answer your question? And they are actually, they are suitable, so you, you, could, you could use them. 
Okay, if, if you have any other questions, then please go ahead and uh, write them down in the chat pane. Uh, we will be here for the next 10 minutes to answer any uh, question, not only related to this uh, last uh, session on, on weights, but uh, in general. So please go ahead. So we have a final question about, uh, so what if you are using a longitudinal mo model like um, a random effect model? So children are included in your analysis if they have uh, data at least one uh, sweep. Okay. Uh, if we use when we lose all of the uh, children not present at that speed. So basically, if you are doing a random uh, effects model, then your data is not in a longitudinal for format. Then it, it, it should be in a kind of uh, more, uh, it would be a panel data set. So this is what I uh, understand. So you might have some missing, uh, missing uh, values and uh, children would still be there. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, you still use the, the weight for the last, uh, most available, uh, so the most recent data you are using, I would say, because, I mean, the other children would have, would have data for this wave. Ah, so basically, I mean, you should think in terms of what is your analytical sample. So if you are using data for uh, wave one, two, three, four, and five, then your longitude ensemble would be restricted to uh, those who have uh, uh, data in all of these waves. And therefore, you should, I mean, use the weight for wave five. I mean, usually you would limit your, your if you are using data from different waves, then you would limit your sample to those who have, uh, uh, I mean, non-missing values in all of these waves. Yeah, I mean, I think random effects is a special kind of, I mean, special scenario. So. Uh, I would still suggest using at least the uh, design weights, if not the attrition weights. Uh, but you, you, you need to, to analyze your sample to see uh, who is included and who is not. So uh, if you are losing too many who, uh, yeah, I mean, who don't have an MCS, uh, so who are not present in MCS5, then probably you should use the weights for MCS5. We have a question from Victoria about uh, uh, MCS7 and when the data will be available. So the field work starts in uh, uh, 2018 and the data will become available in 2019, so two years from now. I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand exactly your question. Uh, the questionnaire, there is a draft questionnaire and it was distributed, uh, it is in the CLS website for MCS7. Uh, if uh, you uh, provide your email address, uh, you get uh, regular uh, uh, emails about uh, the new uh, sweeps of any survey that is designed uh, by CLS. And uh, the actual, uh, the questionnaire is in the website, the MCS7, the, the draft one. Okay, well, I think that's um, everyone's questions now. Uh, thanks, every thanks, everyone, for, for listening. And if you wouldn't mind filling out um, the survey for us on the webinar, um, the, the link's been put up there at surveymonkey.co.uk slash r slash tpvw6kl. Um, if you could complete that, that would be really useful. And uh, thanks very much for listening. Bye.